So we've talked about what to do for the full face, the two-thirds, the modified two-thirds view. Let's look at one of the prettiest views of the face that we can, that we can photograph our, our brides and that's what it's called the profile view. It's exactly one half of the face. So let me go ahead and set that up and I'll tell you what to look for and what we shouldn't be doing on a profile view. Toby, I want you to turn your head even more, a little bit more. Perfect, okay, now what I'm looking at right here is exactly one half of the face. Let me take a quick photograph. Aaron, you need to jump in position. Give me my loop light. Maintain that same radius for me with the lighting. Okay, come in a little bit closer for me and cheat it towards me just a little bit more. Right there, good. Okay, hang on right there. Let me get the shot. Okay, we've got a nice loop lighting pattern, which we'll discuss in a bit on our profile view of the bride, but now we need to refine this profile view. There's a lot going on here. A couple of things. Uh, I got her, the plane of her face from the forehead to the chin is pretty much vertical. So I want that plane, I want her chin up or her chin down. I'm going to opt for chin down here just a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. And now we're introducing the dy dynamic diagonal line in that plane of her face right there. Now a couple other things that we need to do to clean up the profile view. Number one is I've got the veil coming out from her chin and from her mouth and so forth. And I think a profile view needs to be just a beautiful clean line from the forehead around the nose, the lips, the chin, and down the neck. I don't want it to be obstructed by anything. So I'm going to move in here and just pull the veil out. We'll take another photograph, but you can watch as I move it how distracting it is. Just see, we got this like hunk of white coming out here. Let's go ahead and just move this back just a bit. So we got just a nice clean line right here. Okay. Let me come back to my position right here. Toby, turn your head away from me a little bit more. Okay, now the other thing too, as we look at this image, let's go chin back down again, eyes a little bit higher. Okay, but I'm gonna walk over here. You're looking straight ahead, aren't you, Toby? Okay, so she's looking straight ahead, but as I take this next photograph, Toby is saying she's looking straight ahead, but when I go really close, doesn't it look like her eyes are actually kind of moving away from me? even though she says she's looking straight ahead. And this is another important consideration when you're making a profile, uh, image, of, or profile image of your bride or anybody, is the eyes have to be, the pupils of the eyes have to be centered from camera position. So Toby, let me turn your head away from me just a fraction more. Now, right about there. And now when I make this image, bring your eyes a little bit more to the right. There you go, a little happier. There you go, eyes higher. Chin down, eyes look a little higher for me. There you go. Now when I look at that image, now the pupils seem centered from camera position. And that's kind of important to do, is having the eyes centered from camera position. It just, you don't want to see all that white of the eye again in this particular situation. So that would be a couple things for our profile view. Another thing, notice that I'm photographing the profile across the front of her. And whenever we're doing that, we're actually telling the viewer's eye to say, hey, if you're taking a profile, you're saying, look at this part of the gown as well. Aaron, come around just a little bit more for me, please. Light a little bit higher, a right, little bit lower. There you go. Let me take this photograph again. Because as we look at our image, you can see just how much of the gown is illuminated right here. So there's two ways to photograph a profile. One way is across the front which means that you are asking the viewer to look not just at the, be the beautiful visage of our bride, but also at her beautiful gown as well. The other way to do a profile is across the back. So <laughs> every time I ask a bride to do this, Toby, what I want you to do is keep your head locked in place and just let from your neck down rotate under your head with your head. Yep, there you go, you got it. Perfect, perfect, keep on going. Perfect, great. Bring your nose back towards me just a bit. Okay, I'm just going to do another quick photograph here. And now look what happens in this image. And again, I'm running a little higher contrast than I normally would. But now when you look at this part of my bride right here, it's in the shadows, isn't it? Well, now I'm telling the viewer to look at my bride, but mainly go to her face because I'm de-emphasizing the bottom part of my image area right here. And why is it de-emphasized? Well, the light hasn't changed with Erin at all, but now she's just throwing a shadow right here because the orientation of you know, the shoulders before was picking up the light. Now the orientation of the shoulders is shadowing the back part of the gown. And it's another way that we can control viewers' eyes to really, to really explore and enjoy our portraits. So those are some of the key things to keep in mind when you're photographing a profile.
Be sure the profile is clean from the top of the forehead around the nose, lips, and chin all the way down here. Be sure the veil's not sticking out the nose or whatever else. Be sure you don't have any hair coming up under the chin. When you see hair coming up under the chin, I call it the billy goat effect. It looks like they need a shave. <laughs> Be sure that you get the hair pulled back too. Sometimes we even use the veil to kind of pull the hair back a little bit so I have that nice clean line all the way up and down. And the other thing too is profile across the front to show the detail in the gown profile across the back to focus the detail on our bride's face right up here.